the students of BMSC are presenting a seminar on image deep learning using digital signal processing. So the intro. Image deep learning is taking an image which is not sharply focused or is out of focus. Okay, so there is a blur in the image. This blur is eliminated when you run this image through a software and you apply different algorithms to it and then you get an image deep blurred. So the different kinds of image distortions that can occur or destroy or degrade your image are first one is noise. Noise is inevitable. Noise creeps into your image when you capture the image through a camera or when you transfer one Im uh, the image from one media to another. Second one is incorrect focusing. Suppose this is the image and you want to focus the uh, lens at this point, but the lens is focused at this point, so this whole area gets blurred. So this whole image gets blurred. So that is the second uh, distortion. Third is exposure error. Suppose different uh, parts of the image have different exposure of light coming off it and then falling on the lens, then there is a whole image results in a blurred image. White balance error is the error when you do not adjust the colors of the image properly. Suppose there is a point where two sharply different colors are there. Then at the demarcation, these two colors get gets smudged and then the, uh, the whole image becomes blurred. So that is white balance error. Other errors are lens distortion, motion blur and more. So now let's study about the cause of image blurring. Uh, first cause is out of focus. When, you when the picture is not in focus, when the uh, lens is focused at some other distance, but the pictures, but the target uh, of the image is at some other distance, then the whole image gets blurred. Second one is motion blur. Suppose the uh, device taking the picture or the target, in target is in motion, then the whole image gets blurred. That is motion blur. Motion blur is of two types, single, uh, single direction and circular. Box blur. Box blur happens when in an image, the pixel center pixel has the average value of all the neighboring pixels, then the whole image becomes smoothened. You lose the sharpness of the image and the distinctive features of the image. The fourth one is Gaussian blur. Gaussian blur happens when you, when the image is run through a Gaussian function. This is done to uh, uh, downplay or degrade the uh, features of the image. Other causes for image blurring are focal length of the lens, depth of the field and then dirty lens. So now let's study about the different algorithms for deep blurring. Uh, these algorithms are run onto the uh, input image or the image which is transferred onto the software. And then when you run these algorithms onto the, onto the image, the, Im uh, the image which you get after, the, after running the algorithm is the deep blurred version of the image. So this deep blurred version is more clearer than the original image which you use. And then the different algorithms being discrete Fourier transform, wavelet packet basis, blind deconvolution, iterative Richardson Lucy algorithm and Laplacian sharpening filters. So the first algorithm is discrete Fourier transform algorithm. F is the image without de uh, degradation. So this image without degradation when it's captured or when it's transferred from one media to another, then uh, some degradation is inevitable. That degradation function is H. So this uh, degraded uh, image is F into H. But now what we need to obtain is only F. So what we do is we run this through an discrete Fourier transform algorithm where the inverse of the degraded function 1 by h is multiplied with this fh to eliminate the h. But then what we fail to consider is n noise which is also inevitable. So this noise also gets multiplied by 1 by h factor to give you n by h distortion. So the output of this whole algorithm is f, the, degrade, the original image, plus n by h which is the uh, noise degradation. So the advantages of this is it's very simple to um, design if you know what the value of h, the degradation which is uh, in the image. And then one disadvantage is you cannot eliminate the noise and this noise can obscure the whole image and the whole and cause the blurring again. So the, uh, let's explain how DFT algorithm works. So this is the original image which is the target and then once you uh, obtain the image through a processor you get a motion blurred image. This motion blur is eliminated by applying 1 by h of the degradation. Suppose h is the degradation, degradation, then you apply 1 by h and then multiply it after applying the DFT. So the concept here is uh, DFT is in frequency domain, so convolution in time domain becomes multiplication in frequency domain. So it's very simple to multiply 1 by h with f into h to eliminate h and the f which is the original image is obtained after you apply the algorithm. So this is how DFT algorithm works. The next type of deep learning technique is the Wiener filter. It works on the principle of deconvolution. This is similar to the DFT method when no noise is present in the image. The advantage of this over the DFT inverse filter is that it takes into consideration the signal to noise ratio. The, the advantage of the Wiener filter over the DFT inverse filter is that it gives consideration to the signal to noise ratio, but it is still affected by noise negatively. Also, there is no tuning parameter 
for the user to adjust the filter. The image here shows a noisy motion blur image deconvolved by the wavelength filter. Superior to the previous two algorithms is the wavelet packet basis method. This allows variable window sizes for different frequencies. This is possible by scaling of the window. Small scales are used for high frequencies and, and large scale for low frequencies. The procedure involves three steps. Wavelet transform the data to the spectral domain, attenuate or truncate the wavelet coefficients and transform back to the data space. The image shown depicts wavelet, uh, wavelet packet basis transformation applied on a noisy image. Another common deblurring method is blind decolumination. An assumption of the approximate degrading function has to be made to carry out this method. The assumption is usually that the input and the impulse response lie in the respective known subspaces. The image here shows a blurred image and deconvolved image using blind deconvolution. The next type of algorithm is the Richardson Lucy algorithm. The next type of algorithm is the Richardson Lucy algorithm, which is commonly used for deep learning. This is popular as it does not depend on the type of noise present in the image. In this method, the difference between the blurred image and the predicted image is minimized using Poisson statistics. Its main disadvantage is the ringing effect produced and the time taken to complete more iterations to achieve a sharper image. The effect of applying an RF filter on a blurred image can be seen on the screen. We have learned many filters till now. Well known filter that is required for image sharpening is the Laplacian filter. This Laplacian filter is a 3 cross 3 matrix which is of 3 types, minus 4, minus 8 and 9 matrices. These are the three matrices which are called as Laplacian kernels. The appropriate kernel is first convoluted with the original image I, which is in a matrix form. This convoluted image is nothing but the Laplacian filtered image. This filtered image F is then subtracted from the original image I to get the Laplacian sharpened image. This sharpened image gives the better quality of the image when compared to the original image. Every minute details of the image can be recognized. This entire process is a non-iterative process. Now let's see some of the examples. This is the picture of a moon. This is the original image. When this original image is filtered by choosing an appropriate kernel, we are going to get a Laplacian filtered image. When these two images are subtracted, we are going to get the sharpened image. Every minute details of the moon like craters etc are recognized in this image. Now uh, this is the second example which is the x-ray of a bone in the joint. This is the original image. This original image is first filtered and then subtracted. You are going to get the sharpened image. Every minor details of the bone as well as the joint is being observed in this x-ray. So we get to know that this Laplacian sharpening filters give, to, uh, give a better image when compared to the original image. And this is the form of image deep learning. Let's see the applications of image deep learning. We can improve the better we can improve the quality of the images for any applications. For example, a vehicle registration plate. When a vehicle speeds, the camera captures the vehicle which is speeding. The vehicle number plate can be obtained by zooming in the image. When we zoom in the image, there's a blur function that is added. This blurring function can be removed by image deblurring process. When we do this, we are going to get the vehicle's number and that vehicle, we are going to, we are going to send the speeding ticket. Uh, CCTV and security camera footages uh, is installed in many areas. We are going to enhance the video quality, which gives a better uh, uh, details of the video, like forensic surveillance video enhancement, face recognition and security systems, etc. Picture and video editing applications, which are used by many people in day-to-day -day life. The medical applications for scans and x-rays and we saw many examples in this presentation where there's a x-ray and we're going to get a better image when you use the deep blurring function, microscopy, iris recognition. Now from all these applications we get to know that image deep blurring is an important in, uh, process in the improving the quality of the image. There are many researchers who are doing research on this topic. 
various techniques using different algorithms are being developed in this field to improve the quality of the image in the easiest way. Thank you.